Welcome to Red Eye. Hello, everyone. I'm Tom Shalou. It's a new year, but don't worry, everybody. It's still the same great show with the same great guests and the same lovable host. Isn't that right, Andy? Thanks, Tom. Couldn't agree more. The same great show with the same great guests and the same unlovable host. Hey. Coming up on the big show, Donald Trump says the only surefire way to send classified information without it being intercepted is to deliver it by courier. I have a feeling Bin Laden might disagree. <laughs> Plus, celebrities make another internet video desperately pleading for people to oppose Trump. You know, I think this one really has a shot of working. <laughs> and finally, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar says watching The Bachelor is like watching people scramble for love like ravenous crabs on a washed up seal corpse. Or as I call it, Tuesday. <laughs> Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Andy. Let's welcome our guests. She didn't go to med school, but she still became a doctor, a spin doctor. <laughs> Columnist and author of the new book, Government Gone Wild, Kristen Tate. You hear him in the morning, now see him in the evening. From the Jim Norton and Sam Roberts morning show on Sirius XM and the Sam Roberts wrestling podcast, Sam Roberts. We're bringing out the big guns tonight, or should I say, <laughs> the cannon. From the podcast, Mike and Tim Visit Earth, comedian Mike Cannon. And it's 5 o'clock somewhere, specifically his chin. Sitting right next to me is comedian Joe DeVito. Okay, let's start the show. It's a new year with a new president. But we're not done talking about John Podesta's emails. The Obama administration claims Russia interfered with our election by hacking Hillary Clinton's campaign chair and the DNC. But WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange tells a different story. Sean Hannity got the interview. Can you say to the American people unequivocally that you did not get this information about the DNC, John Podesta's emails? Can you tell the American people a thousand percent you did not get it from Russia or yes. anybody associated with Russia? We, we can say, um, we have said uh, repeatedly uh, right. over the last two months uh, that our source uh, is not the Russian government, uh, and it is not a state party. He must be lying! So if it's not the Russian government, and not a state party, who's responsible? It could be Russia, but it could also be China. It could also be lots of other people. It also could be somebody sitting on their bed that weighs 400 pounds, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So why does Obama keep blaming the Russians? Assange believes he's, quote, trying to delegitimize the Trump administration as it goes into the White House. Meanwhile, on Tuesday, Russian President Vladimir Putin said, quote, like I keep saying, to quote Shaggy, <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> uh, Joe, what do you think of this? Assange, he's got the goods. He says he's been saying it all along. I mean, this isn't the first time. It's not. I think someone hacked his mustache. What? Assange's mustache looked like they removed every other hair. That's the creepiest mustache I've seen in all times. <laughs> I love his, I love his wonderful <laughs> white locks, though, look. don't you? Um, this just shows you how desperate they are. Look, the election was done. There's no evidence that anyone hacked anything. And if they're suddenly secure, remember when they were saying that Hillary having this private server in her bathroom uh, protected by a can of Glade air freshener? Yes. Uh, this was not a big deal. And now all of a sudden the, the Russians are everywhere. I mean, they laughed at Sarah Palin for saying you could see Russia from Alaska, <coughs> and now they see Russia everywhere that they look they do they're really grasping at straws so why did we even need this uh mike what you know this news from assange he's been saying as he said there right. to sean hannity he said you know we've said before this was not a state actor I mean, I don't know if it was Russia or not, frankly, because I have a difficult time logging into Facebook. <laughs> but I just, yeah. I honestly don't think Julian Assange is even alive anymore. You I don't? think he's a hologram. I saw his face <laughs> flicker a he, little bit. He's, he's certainly has, he doesn't get enough sun, does he? No, not he's, at all. And also, I don't trust anybody with that white but yet silky hair. It is yeah. soft. I had a CEO that had that same hair. Biggest piece of crap I've ever met in my entire <laughs> really? life. Really? Yeah, I'll never, I'll never look at Assange and respect him. You had a CEO with soft uh, hair. Did you touch? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. the CEO's hair? I didn't, but he did have a cleft lip, which was equally off-putting. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Sam, uh, I've, I've been saying this. You know, they came out with this supposed evidence, and the Obama administration is still saying, oh, it was Russia. But, you know, it's well, you got to believe Assange, right? Well, it's also amazing that it's like world news that Julian Assange has evidence that the president was lying. Like, that's the whole reason that Julian Assange is a thing. Like, if there was no president lying if there wasn't a disagreement there then there'd be nothing to leak yes for WikiLeaks. it would just true. be wikipedia it would be the same thing like this isn't <laughs> news this is just of course 
Julian Assange would say the other thing. But I believe Julian Assange. You do. Because mm -hmm. President Obama is the man. And Julian Assange is like, let me tell you what's really going on. Yeah. <laughs> and generally speaking, what's really going on is what's really going on. <laughs> That's it. I know what you mean. Yes. Yes. That's the deepest stuff you've ever said. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I did a little research before I came <laughs> here today. It's pretty philosophical. Uh, Kristen, look, um, the, what do you think? <laughs> I mean, Assange has no reason to lie. So what this is, is this is Obama and the Democrats doing what they do best, promoting fake news. <laughs> like, if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor, and the unemployment rate is 5%. And the media, they just run with this stuff. That's why Trump has no time for the mainstream media, and I hope that all of his press conferences moving forward are just tweets. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, I think they're going to be. <laughs> It's true because they've already tried to push this. They tried to to say that uh, that utility in Vermont was hacked, and they became a news story that Russia is hacked. Fake, fake and it was story. it didn't happen. It turns out the reason there was a security alert was because an employee tried to log into his Yahoo email account. Which, when you think about it, that's much shadier than anything Russia could do. That someone's still using a Yahoo, and someone's using <laughs> a Hotmail account. Isn't that uh, the yeah? The whole syrup production will be shut down for days in Vermont. <laughs> if that happens. Oh. It's true. I mean, I think that the, the it, when, when I first read the story. Mm. It was that they got into the power grid, and yes. then they said it wasn't the grid; it was just some guy's uh, laptop, right? It was one laptop. Yeah, he's just checking his email. Yeah. But, that, but that somehow was said the Russians did it, and then that gets in our minds, and it turns out like, oh, it wasn't really that. But you remember the initial headline; you don't yeah. remember the retraction they clear. But by the way, like before we go and say that you know Julian Assange is this beacon of truth, and everybody else is lying. Yeah, it would be a lot easier to trust Julian Assange if he was like, no, the Russians didn't do it. China didn't do it. It wasn't a country. Well, then who was it? I'm not telling you. <laughs> it's like true. just say who it was then. If yeah. it's like you have all the truth. Well, no. I, well, this is what I'm going <laughs> to. I'm going to defend Julian Assange. It's the Vinci Code, you know. <laughs> well, th he says it is. The idea is that they have people who leak to them. It's WikiLeaks. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, when they leak, they, they have, have to protect to, the identity, or else no one would leak. Right. Exactly. This is all just about Democrats pointing fingers because the Democrats they still do not understand why they lost. They're blaming everyone now. They're blaming the Russians, and they're just going to keep losing if they don't wake up and look in the mirror and ask why they lost so badly in November. But you can see why people don't believe him, right? He looks like a boardwalk drawing of a Bond villain. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. He's it's a It's always caricature. the weird ones who are I, like yeah. geniuses, though. That's why I trust him. I think we need to hear more about have a cat. Uh, Trump's, Trump's fat guy theory. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Could have been Russia. Could have been... China could have been a fat guy. Yeah. Also, so, why isn't that fat slob recruited to work for I the government know. if he's so able to get With gravy stains yeah. on the emails or something? I don't know what he has it's to not, support yeah. that. It's not usually fat guys, is it? It seems the typical thing is like some skinny guy behind his computer, Just right? Just a bad posture. They're yeah. either they're the extremely fat. obese or extremely scarily thin. There's no in between. Yeah, there is no <laughs> in between. Okay, on Saturday, Donald Trump was asked by a reporter, how important is the issue of cybersecurity in your administration? Here's his response. If you have something really important, write it out and have it delivered by courier, the old-fashioned way. Because I'll tell you what, no computer is safe. I don't care what they say, no computer is safe. I have a boy who's 10 years old, he can do anything with a computer. Uh, if you want something to really go without detection, write it out and have it sent by courier. Yes, 2017 is going to be a great year for bike messengers, <laughs> like this guy. <laughs> no. Wow. Whoa. Well, that sounds just unpractical. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Sam, you said <laughs> you, when he pulled that bike out, you said no. You didn't think it was gonna There's happen no and way it did. Ride that tiny little bicycle. <laughs> no, I saw it with my own eyes. I figured out, by the way, what Donald Trump is telling us. Yeah, what? His kid, it's not the Russians that have <laughs> yeah. it. It's his kid. It's that 400-pound 10-year-old son of his. That's right. Yeah, it's the kid that's been hacking this whole time. He's been dropping these hints the entire way. Yeah. I mean, it is true. I think he's he's trying to say that, I mean, it, this is what old guys say, right? Oh, these kids, they with their these computers. Kids today, yes. <laughs> um, I think this is an example of when Trump says something where you think, not untrue, but still kind of crazy. 
that, yeah, I suppose if email's compromised, maybe it's in the spirit of the founding fathers who also send things by courier. They yes. had no choice. And would these also be delivered by, on, on horseback? Uh, they have to be announced, hear ye, hear ye, before yeah. you <laughs> one of the messages. Exactly. I mean, I guess it could work, but it doesn't seem like the most practical way to do it. Yeah, I mean, you can't just, uh, <coughs> Mike, it's, yeah. people stole those envelopes, too. Yeah. When, 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 <laughs> know. You know, whenever the sheriff of Nottingham sent one of his cronies on a four-day horse ride, it seemed to work really well for them. <laughs> with an assassination attempt just waxed to a little scroll. Yeah, they all went through clearly. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think? I mean, what's the solution? If, if all computers can be hacked and it's, you know, couriers don't work either. We just got to hire more Asians. I feel like that's it. We <laughs> just got to get better computer people to get ahead of the computer hacking game. Smart. Right. And that's right. what, I mean, Smart. that's what we are doing essentially is we, with every problem, we meet it with another layer of security. Right, Kristen? Yeah, no, that's right. And I mean, the liberal media, they're going to mock Trump no matter what he says. You know, yeah, let's mock Trump because he's coming up with an anti-hacking solution because the current administration doing such a great job. I mean, the liberals who are mocking Trump right now, they lost the election because of their own incompetence with cybersecurity. You know, they lost their power, they lost the election, so now all they can do is mock. So they can go ahead and mock while Trump gets to work. Right, go ahead and mock. But Joe, I mean, what, what should... It's, you know, everything's public now anyway. When I write my emails, I assume someone else is going to read them at some point. Yeah, I, th I think this goes back to what we were talking about earlier with the WikiLeaks that uh, it's an interesting defense because they're not denying that what they said was true. They're just complaining about the person who delivered that true information to yes. somebody else. Yes, Julian Assange said that. He yeah. said, I mean, this... It's, it's kind of like if you caught someone breaking into your home and then they said, how dare you accuse me of being a thief? <laughs> They're trying to reframe, but it's like, well, it doesn't really matter how it was delivered. Is the information true or not? Yeah. Um, as far as, like, is a courier the way that we want to send out our, our sensitive information? All I can say is if it's hand-delivered stuff, probably not a lot of trouble with the 400-pound guys because they're not really out-pound on the pavement. <laughs> That's right. Delivering. The criticism is yeah. unfair, though. The criticism of... <laughs> Of, of, of this whole thing. Number one, people have lost the art of letter writing. When was the last time that you got a tangent, like a thank you note? I Everybody write loves a thank you note. Anymore. I'm out of practice. Nobody writes them anymore. Yeah. You're right. One minute, he's like, oh, this Trump guy, he's got to stop tweeting. And the next minute, he's like, I'm going to start writing letters then. And they're like, what's he, nuts? Nobody <laughs> yeah. writes letters anymore. He should tweet the stuff. Yeah, he yeah. can't do anything right. It's not it's fair. fair. In fairness, it is harder to hack a computer than it is to blow dart a pigeon out of the air with a piece of paper. <laughs> in its yeah. claws. <laughs> That's right. Pigeons, I think we should return to the homing pigeon, right? Not a bad Wrap idea. the message around it. We've got to give them something to do. They're, they're all just here ready to spread disease on all of us. That's yeah, my biggest true. fear. It's always the birds, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> what was it? What was the, the, the flu? Didn't it come from the, the bird flu? I believe is what yeah. it was called. Right. Yes. Except for that uh, flu. hoof and mouth disease. That was those cows. Uh, yeah, it's cows. Okay, get rid of them. And the birds. Right. And, uh, but keep your pens and your paper because we just solved cybersecurity. Okay. <laughs> One thing I won't miss from last year, all those celebrity videos denouncing Trump. The election's over, and that means, thankfully, no more Hollywood PSAs. Dear members of Congress. Dear members of Congress. Dear members of Congress. Dear members of Congress. I'm mad. Flabbergasted. Furious. Concerned for my children. I'm worried for everyone. No, 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 no. To the extent that Trump pursues racist, sexist, anti-immigrant, anti-worker, anti-Muslim, anti-Semitic, anti-environmental policies, we demand that you vigorously oppose him. Please tell me it's over. <laughs> <laughs> we expect you to have our backs. To protect our civil liberties. And to use your congressional powers to obstruct. To obstruct. 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 Defeat. Anything. 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 Anything that violates our core values as diverse Americans. Well, at least they're only speaking for themselves. Signed. The majority. The majority. The majority. The majority. The majority. The majority of the American people. Okay, that's it. We've had it. Dear celebrities. Dear celebrities. Dear celebrities. Stop. Stop. Stop making these videos. No one asked you to make them. No one. And very few people seem to like them. Yet you keep making them. And most importantly, they don't seem to help. Whether we agree with you or not. Or not. Or not. Your videos don't change our minds. In fact, they make us want to do the opposite of what you say. So for your own sake, and ours, stop. 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 Signed, everybody in the entire world. Joe. 
<laughs> yes. Are you done with uh, these celebrity videos as I am? You know what? That one really changed my mind. Wait, it did? It to, did? I'm going to ask to redo my vote. <laughs> I I see. No, it's just come on. Look, there was an election. It's settled. And as a matter of fact, uh, the majority of the United States citizens did not vote for Hillary Clinton. Three quarters of them either voted for Donald Trump or, or nobody. So if you're trying to say that you had a majority of the people in the United States, about half of the people in the United States who registered voters didn't even bother to vote. So you're including the people who didn't vote at all. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying you know the majority what? of people in the United States. I'm not saying the majority of people who cast vote. First of all, why is it the electoral college system is coming as such a shock to people? It was clearly in place that this was how this was to be contested. I will say this, though. It's nice to see that dissent is the highest form of patriotism again, because it seemed to have taken a break for the past eight years. Mm -hmm. you, that's right. Yeah, it, it was has. Really popular when Bush was president, but then when Obama was president, oh, anything where you contradicted him, you were stonewalling, you were creating gridlock. Well, those were, weren't they, they were racist, weren't of they? The they ones were racist, who were protesting Obama. People. For me, I would, I would be, nothing would make me happier than if Congress and the president are so bottlenecked they can't do anything because they're less likely to mess around in people's lives. It just strikes me as interesting how this seems to go through this weird cycle whenever the president has an R next to his name, then suddenly we need to mobilize. That's it, Sam. Um, look, they they were saying to write Congress. I guess, you know, they weren't trying to turn over the election here with this latest video. They just want you to, I don't know, contact Congress and resist. I don't know what they want. They weren't even all people. One of them was the robot from Westworld. Oh, we'll yes. That later, but he's <laughs> one, not a Just person. one of them, yes. Come on episode two, Wait, man. He's not a person. <laughs> yeah. No, just so you know. It could be any of those oh, okay. this people. Is, this is more <laughs> hypocrisy like the last thing. Because people, they always, everybody just wants to be mad about something. When celebrities come out and they say, this is how I feel and you should all feel the same way I do, we go, shut your mouth and just get back to entertaining. And then when the Kardashians come on and are just as vapid as anybody can be, <laughs> yeah. everybody goes, they're not even doing anything. Yeah. Why don't you say something that means something? <laughs> so look, either if you don't like this video, and I don't like this video, yeah. but it makes me go, you know what? I have a new appreciation for the Kardashians, for people like that that really are just like airheaded people that you can just watch and you don't have to worry about being like reprimanded at some they, point. They stay in their lane. Exactly. Yeah. That's so. right. Yes. Uh, Mike, you know, I think Joe made a good point about, oh. you know, the majority of people not voting for him. They don't. I say include the non voters yes. in the popular vote. Sure. Yeah. I also want to lump in Sam there and say he did a fantastic job. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. no but, Mike. Isn't that funny? Yeah, we went to Sam and then I said, you know what, yeah. Joe, <laughs> Joe did great. He's, take that 30 seconds. Yeah. Enjoy those coattails. <laughs> like but can we say to celebrities that they should check their privilege a little bit because they're talking about speaking up against a government while being in this position of power and financial freedom that none of us, especially me, have. <laughs> so it's an odd thing. Like, you know, all of them want to speak up and fight the man, but it's like, yeah, did you do that early in your career when the casting director wanted to go in another direction? <laughs> right. Did you speak up to an executive once? Every celebrity they think they, thinks they can like control some situation because they can't technically control it. Same as how Marky Mark could have stopped 9/11. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, Kristen, you know, if I was there. Yeah. Yeah. Kristen, what uh, do you think they're going to keep making these videos or not? I hope they do because they don't work. I mean, look, these celebrities came out in droves for Hillary Clinton, and it just helped Trump. These smug, entitled out of touch celebrities they are so irrelevant and they're mad that they're being ignored now so they're acting like little whiny children yeah and you want to talk about racism the democrats are racist they <gasps> take the black and the latino vote for granted and they don't do anything mm. to help minorities the democrats are all about rhetoric they have no policies and these celebrities are just they're just squawking throw down the balls in your court to <laughs> democrats coming up <laughs> the new yorker cartoon that your average american can relate to only kidding some left coast elitism. Elite, elitism. I can't say it. It's up next. <laughs> New Yorker cartoons are well known for making average Americans double over with laughter. So maybe that's why one of their latest is getting so much attention. People seem divided over whether it's hilarious or horrendous. The cartoon depicts a man standing up on an airplane saying, these smug pilots have lost touch with the regular passengers like us. Who thinks I should fly the plane? The website Bustle called it the perfect analogy for 2016's political climate. But others lashed out on Twitter. Do you think there was actually someone at The New Yorker who, could, who thought this cartoon made sense? Or is it just 100% trolling? And this one. People are accusing political elites of being out of touch. Let's prove them completely right with an asinine straw man. 
but I say the cartoon is perfect just as it is because it is a perfect illustration of the way the left feels about this country. They think it's an airplane and they think the government is the pilot. They don't want to know how to fly the plane. They just want to have someone tell them when to board and get them a snack and a drink and then recline their seat and relax while someone else takes them to their destination. But our country is not an airplane and holding elective office is not like being a pilot or even a lacroscopic surgeon. It's more like riding a bike, something almost everyone can do. Right, bike guy? <laughs> Wait, that, you should have gotten one of those little tiny bikes. Say, <laughs> that, that, he thought he was on that yeah. little bike. I don't know if that bike, uh, I don't know if that made my point or maybe, <laughs> I think I refuted my own monologue with that video, right, Sam? No, he was real good before he hit the sign. He was awesome. Yes, he was. Riding that bike. He was. Here's the thing, though. And this is what really makes, like, you're right, I think, about your monologue, that anybody is supposed to be able to get that office of being the president if the people support them and if they can get the votes. That's why The Rock can run around and be like, you know, I was thinking about running for president. And we all love The Rock, so we're like, it's a great idea, Rock. <laughs> yeah. I would definitely vote for you. Yes. Because there's like a system of checks and balances and there's all these things at play that make it so like to fail as an individual at being the president, it's not that easy. Right. Like, there's a lot of people making sure that you're okay. When you're a pilot, there's no checks and balances in the cockpit. Maybe a Sully, co pilot. Maybe if you're maybe. lucky. Sully gets all the credit for landing on the ocean, right? <laughs> yes, yes. But if he had crashed the plane, they would have been like it was the old guy thinking he could land in the river. Oh. <laughs> Not like, well, he passed it through this branch and that branch, and we made sure that it was okay. Right. Spoken, it's a totally different thing. Spoken like a true, ignorant pilot apologist. <laughs> <laughs> There's no checks and balances. You got a co pilot, you have the computer system, the thing basically drives itself. <laughs> well, it is true that uh, most of it is autopilot. Yeah. But uh, look. I think, do you think that, the, that it is a good analogy, Mike, the cartoon? No, I mean, I thought it was fine, but I think it's, it's hilarious how, I, and I guess this is why we have a job, but people on both sides react so strongly to an obvious troll job. Yeah. People are trying to get their attention. They're trying to piss them off, and by gomet, they're going to do it. Yeah. I don't think gomet is a word, but I certainly used it. It could be. But it, it, it is an odd thing. Like Both sides would actually maybe unify and figure out that we're two sides of the same coin if they realize that we're both whiny, complaining little babies <laughs> about every little piece of news. That's right, Joe. Mm. Uh, do you think? <laughs> yes. do you think That's my usual intro. Yes. Complaining, complaining babies. But do you think that uh, that you need an expert? I'm sick of experts yeah. telling me because mm. the experts they they're not good at what they're they do. Good at what they do. Yeah. First of all, gutsy call a cartoon in the New Yorker where every Trump voter is going to see it. Yes, they exactly. They love those New York. I don't think I've ever singled over in laughter, let alone doubled over in laughter from the yeah. New Yorker cartoon. <laughs> they they don't even get their their own jab here because. It's, it's not, oh, those pilots. It's, the point is, people got tired of saying, hey, you know those guys in first class who are up in front of the, by the pilot saying, here's a couple extra bucks, never mind what the ticket says, go where we tell you. <laughs> That's who people were revolted against. But I will say this, this, this cartoon does work with the Elaine Bennis from Seinfeld, Seinfeld caption of, I wish I were taller. Because then he, yeah. could be, he could easily reach the things in the overhead compartment. True. I see. I don't even know the one you're talking yeah. about, but it's a Seinfeld reference, right? Seinfeld reference. Okay, it did. It probably did make sense. Uh, Kristen Seinfeld was a show on in the '90s. <laughs> <laughs> it was okay. funny. It was lots of look. Why does this mean that Trump is going to get reelected, Kristen? Well, I think. <laughs> <laughs> question. No, but this cartoon is kind of knocking Trump for his lack of political experience. But what this cartoon and what liberals totally don't get is that experience in the real world is so much better than experience growing there it government. Is. Yes. And Obama, he didn't have much political experience anyway. He was a community organizer who was a senator for two years. Yes. So we got to get the community organizers out of there. And we want people like Trump. I mean, just today, Ford announced that they are going to cancel their plant in Mexico and create hundreds of jobs here in the U.S. That's what happens when you put people in there who have business experience. That's right. That's what happens when you threaten people by Twitter. It works. Coming up, back by popular demand. It's halftime with TV's Andy Levy. And be sure to check out the Red Eye podcast. Subscribe on iTunes and on foxnewsradio.com. Welcome back. Time to find out what we got wrong and what we missed from TV's Andy Levy over in the Red Eye News Deck. Hey, Andy. Hey, Tom. Welcome back. Hey, welcome back. Did you have a good break? 
I had a good break. Excellent. Excellent. Are you going to miss me? I, I did miss you. Are you going to, though? What do you mean? When I, when I move to 9 p.m. <laughs> I, I certainly would. Well, I'd watch your show every night. Okay, thank you. That's all I needed to know. <laughs> Uh, Julian Assange says Russia was not uh, behind the hack. Jill, you said Hillary had a private server in her bathroom. Yes. Uh, first of all, the story was that uh, the Dedmer company that hosted her server had it in a bathroom closet, and then that actually turned out not to be true. Oh, where did they have it? Yeah. Wherever they kept their servers. Oh, it, it, it's private. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean yes. to pry. No, it's okay. It's okay. I'll she didn't you. have any servers in her home, Andy? No, it was, the servers were in Denver. In someone's uh, basement. But yeah. they, were not in a, they were not in a bathroom. Did up in a basement, Andy. That I know. is so sketchy. Joe said, Joe said bathroom. I was nearly really correct. Sorry. <laughs> um, correct. Did, did Podesta still reply to a phishing email that wouldn't have fooled my dad? Yes. Is that still true? Yeah, I believe okay. that's still true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Mike. Yes. So you come on the show. Is this your first time on the show? This is my first time, yeah. The first thing out of your mouth is just raw, naked bigotry about people with silver hair. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's the foot you want to get off on here? I just I kind of wanted to be strong on my message and stay on yeah. point. <laughs> All right. I don't have to like you, but damn it, I respect you. <laughs> uh, Sam, you said it'd be easier to believe Assange that it wasn't Russia if he said who it was. Yeah. All right, here's the thing. I personally, I believe the first three letters of Assange's name are an accurate description of him. And he's <laughs> fairly low on the list of sources whose statements I take at face value. But let's parse what he says. He said, quote, we can say our source is not the Russian government and is not a state party. He might well be telling the truth there, but his source could have gotten the emails from Russia or a state party. I guess that's true. I'm still, what does ASA stand for? <laughs> it's ASS. <laughs> oh. There's two S's there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Really, like a butt. Really obscured right. my yeah. larger point there, Sam. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Kristen, you said Assange has no reason to lie. Yeah. I, I don't believe that's true. I, he may not be lying, but I think he does, he does not want to be seen as being in bed with the Russian government. So he does. that is a possible reason for him to be lying. Andy, Assange is a good man, and don't you dare say otherwise. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Did you believe that a couple years ago? No. <laughs> <laughs> But now he's defending Trump. I know. I, know. <laughs> I like you because you're honest. Uh, Trump says computers aren't secure and we should use couriers. Has he never seen Casablanca? <laughs> yes, the couriers. The letters of transit. It's the entire plot of the film is someone murdered the German couriers and they got the letters of transit. Yep. Hey, spoiler alert, Andy. Oh, sorry. It's on my Netflix queue. Yeah, okay. Um, also, Humphrey Bogart uh, is an android. In the, in, in, very weird. Very ahead of its time, that movie. Uh, I'm going to skip that. It's too complicated. <laughs> I was going to explain one-time pads and ciphers, but nobody wants to hear that, do they? Mm, I don't think so. You probably got yeah. something coming, good coming up right here. Yeah, uh, Celebrity video stuff. Joe, you noted that in the video they say that a majority of Americans didn't vote for Trump, but you pointed out that a majority of Americans didn't vote for Hillary Clinton either. Yeah. I, that's absolutely true. And uh, to me, the more the Democrats carp on the popular vote, the dumber they sound. Yeah, well, again, we all knew the rules of this contest yeah. going in. I, yeah. I think Jill Stein's still counting votes she in might, some She might be, yeah. Also, didn't, didn't we hear for the last eight years about the evil obstructionist Republican Congress? And now these celebrities, they're literally using the hashtag obstruct. <laughs> yeah. what, it's what they want Congress to do now. Well, I, I might agree with them there. Bring on a little bottleneck and uh, we'll, we'll see just how useless most of the people in the government actually yeah, are. Yeah, no, I don't disagree with that. Uh, Sam, nice job spoiling Westworld. <laughs> yeah, it was a big one, too. Right. It was a big one. It was a shocker. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when it happened on the show. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Tom, you said you don't even know what the celebrities want in this video. Yeah. The video is accompanied by a petition at moveon.org that says exactly what they say in the video. I guess they want people to sign their petition. Right now it has about 1,600 signatures. Yeah, and the petition it is... It doesn't seem much. It's not, it's not specific, though, is it? It's... It says, like, literally what they say in the video yeah. is, is what it says in the petition. They're calling on Congress to obstruct Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the New Yorker cartoon. Tom, you said New Yorker cartoons are well known for making average Americans double over with laughter. Yes. I strongly disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've seen people really laughing. <laughs> Just in the street? Yeah. Holding, holding the actual magazine? Yeah, walking down the street, reading the magazine, yeah. cracking up. Yeah, all right. <laughs> well, it certainly wasn't at any of the Barowitz columns. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's, some people think those are real, Andy. 
People forward those to me. Like, oh, I know. It's. I mean, they're they're not real or funny. Sam, you brought up the Rock and how people keep bringing up his name <clears throat> and how you would you know vote for him for president. Yeah. Yeah. I live in fear that he's going to tweet something problematic. <laughs> like, I so don't want because it's like this is the Rock, man. He's like perfect. Right, so you're worried that once he steps into this world, there's going to be imperfections. Like, right now, there's no reason for anybody to dislike The Rock. Yeah, I'm yeah. just afraid one of these days he's going to get drunk and tweet something about the Jews or something like that. <laughs> you know? And he'll be like, oh, Rock, come on, man. You know? But we'll still have WrestleMania. That's true. Uh, Mike, you said it's an odd thing how people react to an obvious troll job. Yeah. I, I generally agree with you, and I think most of this stuff is, I don't think this was a troll job, though. No, I, I don't know. I think it was very, it was obviously made to incite aggression from one of the sides, I think. I don't think so. I think it was just made so that people who read the New Yorker go, yeah. Right, yeah, get a little yeah. chubby going, they yeah, can go yeah. to work, yeah. edge the rest of the day, and then finally get home and finish. <laughs> I'm not sure I would have put it that way. Sir. <laughs> but again, I respect you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, lastly, Joe, you said people revolted against the passengers in first class, not the pilots. Like, that's a better analogy. Yeah. I'm not so sure. I think a lot of people feel like the pilots are steering the plane into a mountain. In which case, yeah, I would rather have a passenger go up and knock out the pilot and try to fly it. Well, it's a lot to get from that cartoon, Andy. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> the layers of the onion are being peeled back. Yes, the New Yorker. <laughs> mm. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. Coming up, have you ever wondered what basketball legend Kareem Abdul-Jabbar thinks of The Bachelor? Well, have I got a story for you. But first, Kennedy. <laughs> NBA legend and cultural critic Kareem Abdul-Jabbar thinks The Bachelor is killing romance in America. In an essay for The Hollywood Reporter, he argues that the show's unrealistic beauty standards and dumbed-down dialogue have a harmful effect on the millions of impressionable young people who tune in every week. Kareem writes, with all eyes fixed firmly, uh, firmly fixed on firm buttocks, the criteria for finding love becomes how high a quarter will bounce off rock hard abs. Will we ever witness a conversation that isn't so bland and vacuous that words seem to evaporate as soon as they are spoken? He notes, the cruel result is people on these shows are so anxious to be in a relationship that they trick themselves into thinking they're in love. Contestants on these relationship game shows are competing for a prize, but is that prize love or a relationship? Hmm. Joe, uh, I, he gets pretty deep about this show. He does. He's, he's, I, I agree with him. You I do? I think, yeah, it, clearly arranged marriages are the way to go because people after their own devices are gross. <laughs> but, uh, the, you know, the, 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 he says there's all these rules and everything, uh, yeah. but it comes down to basically he's saying it's all about looks. Well, it's not just about looks. It, it, and looks, looks are a part of the larger, ridiculous, unrealistic fairy tale uh -huh. thing here. And that these shows are the, uh, when people behave badly, they're almost like the relationship version of watching Hoarders, where you can look at your own <laughs> life and then watch the show and say, well, at least I don't do that. Yes. But we need to get rid of the whole fairy tale thing, because remember, fairy tales are not just princesses and old castles, they're also where witches eat children. And yeah. that's, they forget about that part of the fairy tale. Oh, yeah, that was always my favorite part. Uh, Kristen, the. <laughs> Do you think these shows hurt modern love? No, I don't have any problem with this. It's just TV. And everyone loves watching beautiful people get rejected or like <laughs> fall on their asses because it makes us average Joes feel better about ourselves. And I think TV plays to our darkest sides. Like, I don't watch The Bachelor, but I love this other show called Little Women LA. And it's about <laughs> bickering really cute little people fighting. They go through fist fights. They get in huge arguments. It's hilarious and fun. That's what we like. We like the cat fights and the rejection. The part where they get the roses and live happily ever after, that's boring. No one watches it for that. <laughs> really? That's interesting. <laughs> Mike, yeah. uh, would you... Uh, Kristen described herself as an average Joe. That would you infuriate her. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as she said, it's like about watching beautiful people get rejected, I wanted Sam to push her off her chair <laughs> right there so we could just get a little bit of that in the studio. But this is just... This article is just an example of how marriage can ruin any man. This guy is... He, he, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is a pretty insightful guy and writes 
writes pretty beautifully, yes. but he's clearly stuck to watching this program with his wife, <laughs> and he's gotten so ratched, uh, wrapped up in it that he just figured out he needs to comment on the nuance of what makes this show tick and why it appeals to our country. That's so true. I didn't. I was wondering why does he watch the show yeah. if he you know has all these problems with it? It's that he has to watch it with his wife. It's the same reason I didn't believe Bruce Jenner was going to become Caitlyn Jenner. I had a really involved theory that I thought it was just tentpole bull news that they were just going to like, you know, but, it was going to be used to launch the next season. But it did happen. It did, it didn't did. it, Sam? Yes, I'm sure it did. What do you think of The Bachelor? Is he, is, he, is he right about it? Well, I don't watch stupid shows like The Bachelor because wrestling is on. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, I mean... Kareem Abdul-Jabbar writing about The Bachelor. First of all, I do want to see a photo of him watching The Bachelor. Like, I would listen to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's Bachelor podcast. Oh, yeah. But, like, look at his own industry that he came from. The NBA. Yeah. And the relationships that you read about coming from the NBA. If you want to look at, at terrible role models for relationships, I would say every basketball player that we've ever heard of. <laughs> his teammate, yeah. Magic Johnson, had a dicey one. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. Right. They weren't setting the bar to... It's not a great example, the NBA, right? No. Uh, but... A terrible example. But he's, you know, he's a good example himself, right? No, because nope. he's sitting there, like, his idea of having a good time is writing, is being an old man who complains about yeah. the bachelor. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you're right, all right, coming up. <laughs> a month without booze. Should you do penance after overindulging during the holidays? The Dry January campaign encourages people to give up booze for the month. The purpose? To make us even more miserable during the <laughs> darkest days of winter, I believe. But there's something even worse, possibly. Veganuary started three years ago, which aims to reduce the suffering of animals by inspiring and supporting people across the globe to go vegan for the month of January. Then in February, they can go back to enjoying tasty, tasty animals. <laughs> Many believe the detox is good for the body and the soul, but a blogger at HeatStreet.com is skeptical. Constance Watson writes, Pious abstinence for the first month of the year is indicative of our desire to have it all and have it now, but never to commit. Hmm. Uh, Kristen, would you go vegan for a month? No. <laughs> Veganuary, that's evil. But uh, dry January, I mean, we're just all rehabbing from drunk December. You know, the second I got to my parents' house for Christmas, I started drinking. I don't remember anything. I didn't stop until I left. So I don't think this has anything to do with morals or anything. I think we're all just kind of like trying to lose the weight and sober up from December. That's right. That is a great point, Sam. Yeah. If you really want to do penance, Stop drinking in November till the end of the year. Do you know what dry January used to be called? What? Flaking out on your New Year's resolution. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like yeah. everybody just ad either admit that you're a quitter or set a realistic goal or do something. They're 100% right about the inability to commit. Nobody's impressed that you stop drinking for 30 days. It's just annoying. It's just like a thing to tell your friends about. Like, oh, actually, I'm not drinking this month. Yes. Well, then all your friends should not be drinking with you in February, March, April, or the <laughs> yes. months after that that I, f I can't remember all of them. Uh, what Would you do this, Mike? I am doing it, yeah. You, I'm, you, I'm, I'm not drinking for January, but I am going to be doing psychedelics on a pretty regular <laughs> basis. Yeah, I'm excited about that. But I don't know. It, it's, uh, it's purely vanity. It has nothing to do with any type of, like, you know, me trying to get my health right or anything. I just can't stand and the fact that on January 3rd I'm on TV and I have four pounds of meat luggage on my jaw. Right <laughs> well, you yeah. look fine. Joe, it. you do too. But here's the thing. The, uh, w you know, it, it, drinking, you know, it, yeah. it, it causes problems in people's lives. Maybe it's good if they give it up for a month. Uh, where's the courage in giving this up in January after you've been blowing it out for, for months? I, th I think Kristen's right. It comes on the heels of, of holiday partying. Although I was disappointed in playing the weight game of the Democrats. I felt like it dropped the ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I'd like to see something. You really have courage. Go, go no drinking or boozing in, in July when you're on a cruise somewhere with some buffet where you need an insulin pump at the end. Let's, that's, that's right. That's, that's how you really do that's it. That's willpower. Very special thanks to Kristen Tate, Sam Roberts, Mike Cannon, and Joe DeVito. That does it for me, a man named Tom Shalou, and I'll see you next time.